Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Devin, AKA Action Ricker, and today I'm gonna to be answering some of your fitness questions. And it turns out that most of my subscribers are fairly new to fitness in general, or maybe have never even started. And that's totally fine. I'm here to help you out as much as I can. So I recently made a YouTube video asking what your questions were, and I got a lot of responses. Now, unfortunately, I won't be able to get to all of them, but I'm gonna answer about 10 questions here today. Okay, so let's get started. The first question up, how to start working out and sticking to it continuing for a long time? This is something that we all have to ask and answer in our own lives. Whether you've done fitness before or not, it's something that you're gonna have to start at some point in your life and it's a lifestyle. I know that's a really cliche to say, but it really is a lifestyle. And because it really is a lifestyle, it's something that needs to be sustainable and scientific for a long period of time. So you always see these guys like working out like super intense, they're sweating, they're out of breath, and there's a place for that definitely in the gym. Definitely need that, especially if you're like an athlete. But if we're talking about long-term health and fitness, then this is something that needs to be more sustainable. And so my tip for you would be to start really slow, start really light, and do something very easy and kind of build up from there and find what works best for you. So a lot of my clients do about three to four times a week. Whereas you'll see like athletes maybe do five or six times a week. So what is sustainable for your lifestyle? Do you have school? Do you have work right now? How can you work out around that? And also does it need to be an hour and a half workout or would 30 minutes do just fine? So find something that's right at the minimum effective volume, which means that it's an effective workout without being too overbearing into your lifestyle. So start small, start light, and kind of just build up from there. And then of course, remember your training principles, remember to change it up every now and then. And then having new goals every month kind of helps with that as well. Whether you wanna add on some mass in the biceps or slim down in the waist a little bit more, either one, just make sure that you're having new goals kind of every single month. And it could be the same goal. If you wanna keep gaining and gaining or, or taking away, then that can be effective as well. Okay, so on to question number two, and I'm sorry if I'm skipping your question, just make sure to ask it in the comments down below and I'll see if I can get to it. How would you recommend getting in your daily protein intake for someone struggling to meet the requirement one gram per pound of body weight. So that's only really the requirement if you are a bodybuilder or a strength power athlete, that's a really good place to start. So you don't necessarily need that. I believe ACSM, the American College of Sports Medicine, which is where I'm certified as a personal trainer through, uh, recommends 0.6 to 0.8 times your body weight. So you don't necessarily have to get one gram per pound. It would be helpful if you are a bodybuilder, but if you're someone that's just looking to get in better shape, not necessary to get up to that level. So that's the first thing. The second thing is have frequent meals throughout the day. So instead of having like two or three big meals, have about five or six small meals. And that really helps me out with getting my protein in. And what you could do to even kind of like work around that is if you do have three meals and you just can't get out of that, like you have school and maybe you're eating right before, you're eating lunch and you're eating after, maybe you can have like a protein shake, which still counts as a meal. You can have that like around your workout window. Uh, you could even do like a snack that is full of protein whether it's a protein bar or whatever works best for you. So just make sure you're having protein in every single meal and have frequent meals throughout the day. Okay, so this leads really nicely into question number three. So uh, he asked, would you recommend taking on whey protein shakes after small workouts for someone who's skinny? I'm not sure exactly what you mean by small workouts. As long as you're, you're breathing a little bit harder, you're sweating a bit, you're having like a decent workout, I always recommend having a whey protein shake as it's really gonna get in and repair the muscles. So usually you wanna do that during a resistance training session. That means anytime you're using force added onto your body, so whether it's a gravitational force like with push-ups and sit-ups or resistance force with like bands or machines or free weights. So anytime you're doing that, you're actually causing micro tears in the muscles and it's really important to get that protein in and build it back up. So especially if you're trying to gain some muscle, I would definitely recommend adding in a whey protein shake. And if you're doing cardio too and it's a really hard session, I would probably recommend having protein during that as well. So this person asks, is a leverage squat a good alternative for a barbell squat in terms of strength? Just in case you don't know, a leverage squat is, there's actually specific machines for them, but also uh, some people use um, like a hack squat as well. So basically it's a machine squat at a slightly different angle where you're kind of lean forward or actually lean back just a little bit. And it's really good for a hypertrophy as well, especially like if you're a bodybuilder or just looking to add some more mass onto your quads and glutes. But I will say it doesn't really take the place of a barbell squat Squat. Anytime you have a barbell exercise, that's almost always gonna be more dominant for strength training than any other exercise. So yes, it could be a good alternative during certain cycles, but never let it take the full place of a barbell squat, especially if you're an athlete. Okay, so next question is, what is the best exercise for building bigger rear delts and lats? 
So my favorite for the lats specifically are pull-ups, especially wide grip. Anything where your arms are out wide and you're pulling down is gonna be really helpful. You can do like close grip as well like this. It's just gonna be getting a lot more uh, bicep work. Any kind of row like a barbell row or a dumbbell row is gonna be really helpful, but mostly it's gonna be your vertical pulling motions. So you can also add lat pull downs in there with pull-ups. And then I just now noticed you said real delts, but I think you meant rear delts. Anything that's like a reverse fly, so it could be with cables or it could be with bands where you're just separating out like this. I like to take a cable and have it across my body up top and then bring it down and back just like that. That's probably my favorite rear delt exercise. And you can even use the other hand to just kind of like touch that rear delt and just feel it squeeze as you do that. Like I can feel that right now without even adding resistance. So just make sure whatever motion you're doing, you're pulling out and back and maybe even down just a little bit. And the second part of this question is how to burn fat effectively with a busy schedule. Really, it just comes down to your nutrition. Are you having protein in every single meal? Are you eating your carbs at the right times? I think a lot of people think that carbs are the enemy and that's really just not the case. Really more often than not, you're just probably having too many carbs at times when you don't need them, like right before bed. So try to limit your carbs to days when you work out and around the workout window. And you can also have them on days that you don't work out. Just try to have them a little bit earlier in the day because keep in mind, carbs are your number one energy source. And if you're having them right before bed, you kind of just don't need them at that time. I hope that makes sense. If you want me to go into more detail, let me know. Okay, so next question, what is the best way to get a Greek physique and a V taper? All right, so you have a genetic frame. So the V taper really comes down to genetics a lot of times. Now, what you can do to really maximize your genetics is to build bigger lats and to build bigger shoulders, to bring out the width of the upper body. That way your waist looks smaller. And then obviously just losing body fat is gonna help with that as well. So build up your lats, build up your delts, and you can't really do anything about your hip size. They just naturally are the way they are right there, but you can just lose a little bit of body fat and that will help out with that kind of V taper shape. So next up, this person says, I'm a boxer, but I'm also really keen on bodybuilding. I love that. I'm just too concerned with the possibility of gaining weight and gaining mass, putting me in a boxing division that is clearly too dangerous for me. What do you think of this problem? So boxing, like a lot of other sports, whether it's wrestling or UFC or anything, could be powerlifting, anything where you have to make a certain weight to be in a certain division can be complicated. The most important thing for you is you wanna maximize as much muscle mass as you can within that division. It also depends on your competition times. I don't really know the divisions in boxing, but let's say you have to be 150 pounds. Let's say in the off season or when you're not boxing, you could gain up to like 160. 60, maybe 165 and just add on a lot of muscle. And so that's totally fine. That totally works. But what you would need to do just like a bodybuilder is shed off some of that fat as you're going more and more into the competition phase. And last thing about that, I think you have the right mindset. Try not to be at the low end of your category of your division. Try to be more at the high end. So if we go to our example where maybe 150 is the top cutoff and you're weighing in at like 155 or something like that, it would definitely be beneficial before the fight to lose that five and a half pounds or so and really get down under 150. But yeah, you definitely have the right mindset to stay right at the top of that range. So I would just say gain as much as you can within that range that you feel most comfortable with. And then like I said, you can go a little bit above that in the off season or outside of fighting, and then you can taper it back down, bring that body weight back down as you get closer to the fight. Okay, so next question, I love this question. What are the best exercises for a bigger chest and bigger arms? So obviously nothing is better than a good old fashioned bench press with a barbell. Now anytime where you're pressing, it doesn't just have to be with a barbell. Some people, they have shoulder issues and they can't get in that position. So what you can do is you can grab onto a machine. Maybe you can tuck in your arms a little bit more and then do an exercise like that. So for your chest, your primary motions are gonna be your pushing motions. So pushing out just like this, or maybe even at a slight incline to hit more of the upper pec as well. So make sure you're hitting all aspects of the pecs. So whether it's the lower, middle, or upper pec, or maybe even on the inside as well. So the two primary motions are, like I said, the pressing motion, but also the flies. So I like flies, especially with bands. If you've never tried flies with bands, give that a shot. I think you're really gonna like it. And then as I'm flying, I actually like to twist my hands in just a little bit, kind of have my pinky go down towards the ground. And that really helps get that extra stretch. And when you're doing it, make sure to go back as far as you can and then squeeze as much as you can at the front. And then for your arms, it's gonna be very similar. You're gonna use barbell curls for your biceps and any variation of that. It could be dumbbell curls, it could be spider curls, it could be machine curls. Just make sure that you're staying consistent with it and that you're staying in an appropriate range for growth, which with the biceps is probably somewhere around three, four sets of 10 to 20 reps. And you can do that a few times a week, maybe two to three times a week. So my favorite exercises for growing the triceps are close grip bench, dips, 
tricep pull downs and tricep kickbacks. Now there's a lot of different tricep exercises that you can do. Those are just some of my favorite ones. But like I said, choose a few of those and stay consistent for a full mesocycle. Then choose a few other ones and stay consistent on those and just keep going, give it time and they will grow. All right, so next question. I've been working on strength for four to five years and maxing out at my gym. How would you go about transitioning from strength to trying for a well-defined body? So that's kind of like going from powerlifting to bodybuilding. So if you've been maxing out a lot and been really going for strength, that's really good. That means you probably have a really solid foundation of muscle. But it also probably means that your rep ranges have been a little lower. So maybe three reps, five reps, seven reps. Obviously, if you're maxing out, sometimes you'll do one rep. That's a really good sign if you have a lot of strength. But when you're transitioning, what you'll do is you'll take your reps up. Usually, you'll go about 10 to 15 to 20-ish reps, somewhere around there. So reps go up a bit. And then choose bodybuilding exercises. So instead of something like a heavy deadlift, you might do something like an RDL, or you might do back extensions or leg curls or something like that to hit those same muscle groups just from a different area. But I would also say if you love those powerlifting movements, squat, bench, and deadlift, don't take them out because they're really handy, especially for maintaining and growing muscle mass. But just add on some bodybuilding exercises to hit more of the individual muscles. And that way you can kind of shape the sculpture of your body to be as aesthetic as you want it to be. Okay, so next question, and this is the last one that I'm gonna be able to get to today. This is from Killer Alex. Man, you've been around since the beginning. I appreciate that. He said he's 14, his height is 5'7 to 5'8, I get that. 176, and I think you want to be skinnier, so help. <laughs> okay, so number one, make sure you're just on a really good workout routine. Two, three, four, five days a week, whatever works best for you and your schedule, just like I talked about in the other question earlier. And then make sure that your nutrition is on point. You don't have to count every single calorie. Just make sure you're not having like pizza every single night. And you at your age, man, you'll definitely be able to lean up. Just add in more cardio, add in more resistance training. There's something called NEAT cardio, which is non-exercise activity thermogenesis. That means just basically your daily movement. Whatever your daily movement is, just do more of it but keep track of it and that will really help you lean up. So for instance, with a lot of my clients, we actually just track daily steps and we use whether it's a smartwatch or our phone or something like that just to track our steps. And so a lot of my clients, they'll start off at like two to 3000 steps a day and we'll say, okay, so for this next month, let's bump it up to like 4,000 steps. The next month, let's bump it up to 5,000 steps. And so the more exercise or cardio that you're doing, the more you're gonna lose weight. But obviously do it with something that's sustainable for you. I've just found that walking is sustainable for me and for my clients. So what works best for you? So just make sure to move more often. Take that note that I said from earlier in the video, don't have too many carbs at nighttime. The only reason that you would wanna have that is if your workouts are at night. And then at that point, you would just invert it and have less carbs in the morning and more towards the workout window. And then just make sure you're staying consistent with your fitness routine. All right, guys, so thank you so much for watching. That is all the questions I'm gonna to get to today. If I didn't get to your question, I apologize. Feel free to leave it in the comments down below. Or if you haven't left a question yet, what are your fitness questions? I've been a personal trainer for about 12 years now. So let me know what your questions are in the comments down below. And if you guys like this style of video, who knows, maybe I'll do some more of it. I hope you found it helpful and I'll catch you in the next video.